Hey, it's Wes, welcome to this video. Today I'm here in Sequoia National Forest and just recording a little video on the X-H2. So the X-H2, that's the X-H2S, these are the two Fuji cameras that I am now using for my professional work, my YouTube work, and all my uh, recreational work, except for the X100V, which is my daily street photography camera. So. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I have sold my Canon gear and I am exclusively shooting with Fuji. So I uh, am going to be doing a full review of the X-H2. So far I took it to the dog park and um, my first experience shooting with the X-H2 was, um, it was tricky. I went to the dog park, I was shooting dogs, so I had animal eye autofocus or animal tracking. Um, it was sunset, so it was going. The sun was going down, so the, uh, the lighting conditions were changing, and I found it very difficult to get the shot. So, I'm going to post a, a pic cute picture or two, but that was definitely not the right place to start testing this camera. Then we came uh, later in the week. The weekend we came up to Sequoia National um, uh, Forest camping. Actually, uh, you can see over there. Uh, the GP. We're gonna head out. There's the little GP Jeep. Uh, GP's name is Maisie. Rhymes with Daisy, which is her dog's name. Uh, on the way out, after we get past the dirt road, we're gonna take off these freedom panels, freedom tops, and have a little cool air. We were camping up here, and so I, I took some landscape shots. Um, I tried, I did try the 160 megapixel uh, tilt shift, pixel shift, I forget what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, where it takes 20 shots and you combine it uh, in the Fuji software. So I have a shot of the, um, I think it's called the five needles or the five steeples or something like that, uh, land uh, rock configuration. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that picture. We'll kind of zoom in, look at the resolution. My hope for this camera is the resolution. Um, now, I just did a video on shooting event photography with the X-H2S, and this camera was amazing. I thought the resolution uh, was amazing. It satisfies all my professional needs for event photography. And so this one I'm really looking for, can it distinguish itself? Can it differentiate, differentiate itself uh, from the X-H2S, which I'm already impressed with? So that's what I'll be looking for. Uh, the pressure's on this camera to perform. And so I'm gonna set up some product photography shots, some uh, maybe some portraits, something that really tests uh, the quality of images out of the sensor being 40 megapixels. That's the key differentiator. All right, so having just purchased the X-H2, but having owned the X-H2S, I can say some of the things that I like about the design that they have in common that I'm already valuing are the these seven uh, custom settings. So um, the way I have been using those is I put um, C as the only setting that's different is the film simulation. So it's shooting, um, a, uh, shooting a RAW and a JPEG with Nostalgic Neg, which is a film simulation I like a lot. And then everything else is set to manual. Um, then C2, I have my um, big negative film look recipe on there and then uh, uh, C3 is a black and white, a monochrome setting for, um, it's basically the dude film recipe from the big negative on YouTube. Uh, I'll put a link below to his. Uh, so I have kind of those two film recipes and the first one is just nostalgic neg. And then I flip up to C7. So C1, two and three are photo settings. C765 I put on video settings. Um, and so I'm still dialing those in, but I have put both cameras onto these um, and it's nice to switch between them and the settings are right. So if I'm taking photos, I can easily switch into uh, that and have that comfort, uh, uh, familiarity, knowing where the settings are. Um, a couple of things I talked about is I like uh, looking at my battery life um, when this is off and I also have the shots remaining uh, when this is um, off as well. So that's really nice. Now, 
those are some of the things these cameras have in common which is the top uh, LCD screen, which I do use, and the custom settings, um, which I, I love to use as well. And so, of course, the flip out screen and some of those other things are in common as well, but I like that I can interchange between these cameras. Uh, really, the, the, the pressure is on for the X-H2 to perform because I'm in love with the X-H2S already. And so, if I don't really see that big a difference, um, I, my thinking is if the resolution isn't really there in terms of a, a significant difference, I would probably look towards the GFX 100S, which means a new lens system, of course, but it is the resolution king. And I've shot with the camera. Um, it was on loan from Fuji and I, I absolutely loved it uh, when I had it. So um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, and I was looking forward to testing out the 8K video because that extra resolution, the ability to crop in video might be interesting as well. So I will definitely keep you posted. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's a beautiful place here. I'm testing the Viltrox 13 millimeter uh, F1.4 lens here. And uh, I bought a used 10 to 24 mil that uh, the lens mount fell off. Actually, the lens came off while it was mounted on the camera and the, the plate was still on the camera. So I'm gonna to try to send that to Fuji and get that fixed. First impressions of the X-H2, I'll put some images on the screen. You can also check my Instagram. I will have some photos there uh, that I've posted um, from the Sequoia trip and uh, using the X-H2. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. All right, what I want you to do for this video is comment down below any questions you have about the X-H2 or the X-H2S and I'll do my best to address them in up upcoming videos. All right, so I had a thought about this dog park shoot and uh, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of what happened. Uh, and I noticed that the animal eye out of focus was focusing on the harness like the dogs were wearing, not the eye. And so a lot of the shots, the eye was not in focus, but the chest of the dog was in focus. So um, if anybody knows, and the reason I'm sharing this is because a lot of times people in the Fuji community and in the photography community will have an answer or have something they've read and they'll be wearing, willing to share it. So if anybody knows about this, let me know why this is. Um, I also ran the firmware update right after I got home because I was thinking like maybe I'm missing something in the firmware update. So um, let me know if you know why that might be, why the animal eye autofocus is missing the eye. Um, some of these dogs, they need a haircut because their hair is growing over their eyes. Um, but that is not the case for all the dogs. But um, if anybody knows why that is, let me know, let me know, let me know. All right, thanks, back to the rest of the video. All right, we just pulled out over here because this uh, was the scene of a fire. How long ago was the fire, darling? This is actually ash right here. It was a year ago, and you can just see, even though there's green trees over there and over there, this has just been completely burnt up in this little alcove and actually where we were camping there was burnt places and then untouched places so kind of crazy stop recording <laughs>